Welcome to my channel. Do I say back? I do. We don't know if you've been here before. Hey there, I'm Elise and welcome back to my channel. 제가 보통 한국어로 말하지 않은데 제가 한국말을 할줄 알고 있다는 것은 보여주기 위해 조금 쓰고 있습니다. There are already so many videos of people explaining how they learned Korean or how to study Korean but as usual I just feel like they've left a few things out and so I'm here to share my tips but before we get into it don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram for more advice stories and peeks into my real life in Korea if you haven't had a chance to check out my channel definitely go check out my other videos on things like job hunting apartment hunting and just general life here in Korea. As some of you out there may know, I recently finished cancer treatment here as well, and so I'll also be making videos on things like visiting the emergency room, uh, how to get medical treatment in general, and just sharing my story on what it was like to undergo cancer treatment in another country, specifically Korea, because that's a country I live in. But for now, let's get real. The very first thing that you need to learn Korean is the right attitude. And this is actually where I see so many people go wrong, especially adult learners. No matter what books you buy, no matter what apps you use, no matter what tools you find, it all comes down to attitude. You need to keep your attitude in check and you need to keep these three mantras in mind when you just feel down because you will feel down while you're learning a new language, but you gotta pick yourself back up. Number one, as long as the other person understood what I was trying to convey, I did a good job. I have 100% butchered words, phrases, expressions, conjugations, you name it. But I have always tried to make sure that I never let myself feel like a failure as long as the other person got my point and we accomplished whatever the task was. And you usually do. That's the purpose of language, communication. The purpose is not to be perfect and you should never aim to be perfect or else you will fail and you will feel like you failed. Obsessing over being perfect will ultimately get in the way of your progress. So don't be afraid of mistakes and don't apologize for them. You don't need to be sorry because where you are in your language journey is just where you are. Focus on communicating and make everything else secondary. Number two, I couldn't say that before, but now I can. There are times where I do feel like I'm not progressing in my language ability and that I'm just stuck. But whenever I get hung up on those things, and I do, I try to just remind myself of the things that I used to not be able to do or say that I now can. And that's something that really helps me get over the times where I feel bad about myself for messing up something. Like, I, I do try not to chase perfection, but of course when you make a mistake, you're gonna feel a little bit stupid, like, uh, why did I say that? But I always try to immediately like put those thoughts away and think about what I can say rather than think about how I messed something up. It's a really good way to bounce back. Like, yes, you made a mistake, but think about all the things that you couldn't say before that now you can say. So this is just another step in the road to being able to say all kinds more things. Last, number three, you need to ask yourself, what is an achievable goal? When I see learners get discouraged while on their language journey, one of the things that I notice is that they really set themselves up to fail and to be discouraged because they chose goals that were just too far out there and also too general. They say things like, I want to be fluent in Korean. I want to be able to read Korean books. I want to be able to understand the Korean news. But you really need to choose goals for yourself that are more concrete and more step by step. You're not going to come out of the gates and be able to understand Korean dramas without subtitles or even with subtitles. Something more approachable would be, I want to be able to order coffee or hmm, I want to be able to introduce myself to a new Korean friend or I want to tell Jungkook from BTS that I love him. Did I say his name right? I'm not a BTS fan. We're way out of my age range. Although I will say like, yes, many people of all ages love BTS. I feel very old. We're talking about Dongbangshinggi generation over here. Getting back to the point, let me share how I started learning Korean. I did not start with, I'm gonna read the newspaper, or read a book or any of that. I started out watching the president of all Korean children, Pororo. I watched Pororo and Tayo every day. Wow. I also watched a lot of Superman returns. So as the kids learned whatever their parents were teaching them, I was learning right along with them. 
you need to stay humble and set yourself up for success by choosing a methodical uh, path for how you're going to learn Korean and choosing things that are more approachable even if it's something that's for children that's okay now with the right attitude where should you start your Korean language learning journey Unfortunately, although they are for children, Pororo and Tayo are not level 1. Nope. You should start by learning the Korean alphabet or Hangul. It might seem really intimidating, but learning the Korean alphabet I think is actually easier than learning the English alphabet. It is phonetic and it's very systematic, so once you've memorized it, there's just so much that you'll be able to intake. Uh, I actually learned the Korean alphabet from a Korean friend in a day. It only took him one day to explain how to read the alphabet. And this is not a brag. I'm not trying to say like I'm a genius. So it only took me one day to learn the Korean alphabet. I'm just saying that it's that easy. So because I learned from my friend who just wrote it down in a notebook, I can't give you like a resource that I use to learn Hangul. But I will include a lot of free resources in the links down below so that you can get started. And I really think that it's really not going to take you that long. And like I said, once you've learned the alphabet, you'll be able to read so much. Will you know what you're reading? No. But you can read it. So next up, once you're able to read the alphabet, I recommend that you start uh, learning the basic Korean grammar structure. Rather than learning a bunch of vocabulary that is kind of random and not being able to form a sentence with that vocabulary, I think that you should just start out with learning a few pronouns and then filling them into their places in the sentence. So this is not meant to be a Korean language teaching video, but I will just explain that unlike English, which is a subject verb object language, Korean is a subject object verb language. So kind of like how Yoda talks or if you are familiar with Japanese, it's the same uh, grammatical pattern as Japanese. Okay, now let's talk about how you can learn that, how you can see it, practice it, apply it. First, I recommend that you find yourself the Iwa language program textbooks. I have used, I think, every textbook there is out there now. I've used the whatever the textbook is that is really popular in the US that's from a Hawaiian publishing company. I forgot the name. I've used the Sogang books. I've used... Uh, Seoul National University's books, I've used Yonsei's books, I've used any book that you can think of, I've either used it or I've at least seen it. And I can say hands down that the Iwa books are, they're just better uh, in my opinion. Like I'm not gonna fight you about which book is the best. If you think that your book is the best, whatever. But I just think that these are very straightforward. They explain the grammar point very thoroughly and they've put together a curriculum that is really going to set you up to be able to communicate in Korean fairly quickly. So the way it usually looks is you get the grammar point and then you maybe get a picture and some example sentences below. Then it'll have a brief explanation of the grammar point and how to conjugate the uh, how to conjugate the verbs or whatever to make the sentence using that grammar point. Then it'll have some exercises so that you can practice making sentences with this grammar point. And it'll have some vocabulary uh, words on the side that go along with the uh, exercises. Usually one chapter will have about two or three grammar points and the whole purpose of the chapter is to practice those and get some vocabulary um, little by little. And what I like about this collection of books in particular is that it's very well-rounded. So you'll be able to practice listening, you'll be able to practice speaking, you'll be able to practice writing, and you'll be able to practice reading. What I really don't like uh, I'm going to be a hater for a second on the Sogang books. I really hate the Sogang books because they are very much focused on speaking uh, and maybe listening. And so uh, if you talk to foreigners who live here in Korea, we all kind of know that Sogang is famous for putting out students who speak confidently. I'm not even going to say they speak well because a lot of the students who I've seen come out of that school have some issues with their grammar structure but they can speak very well because that school and that book focuses on putting out students who can speak. But they have problems with their reading and writing that really come out and you can see it in their uh, like topic test score performance for one and for another, once they start getting into the workforce, um, like you can just tell that 
their education was missing something i'm not gonna say they got a bad education or the korean is bad it's just that it's something's missing but when i run into students from iwa their korean is always so good uh, and i went to the iwa language program as well i'm not trying to say that my korean is so good but i'm just saying like you can feel the difference of the education that people get from this program and so i really think that their books are the best books they're just not the most famous but you can actually find these books on ebay and amazon i will include in the description box a link to what may or may not be the first book in this series and you may or may not want to hurry up and go download it because it may or may not be legal but yeah go check it out get started and i recommend that you buy the rest of the books they also have supplementary gram uh, grammar explanation books that are really great they also have workbooks in my opinion if you're very self-motivated you don't actually need the workbook but if you feel like you need some structure and also if you want to see the answers to the questions like maybe maybe you're not confident that you wrote the answer correctly so you want to check the back of the book does mine match uh, then you might want to get the workbook but it's just that's completely up to you if you're not planning to buy any textbooks or you just want some other resources i would recommend that you check out a website called how to study korean and there are tons of websites and resources out there but this is pretty much the only one that i use because the grammar explanations are just so detailed and so accurate sometimes you look at grammar explanations online and it's like they kind of assumed that you know things that maybe you don't know or they just only explained one instance of being able to use a specific grammar uh, grammar structure when actually it applies to many different things depending on the context and the nuance but i really feel like how to study korean does a great job at addressing this as well one thing i don't like about these pages is that they are so long they are so long so i usually skip uh that was me using a mouse with my wrong hand i usually skip to the actual example sentences unless i don't understand at all like usually i have a vague idea so i'll go look at the example sentences and then it's like oh okay i see how to use it uh but i think that this is really all you're gonna need to be honest uh aside from the textbook like i use the textbook and i use how to study korean the website and I was pretty much good to go there are other books that i could recommend in future videos maybe i'll make some specifically on how to study for topic or how to study korean vocabulary but just for a general where to start that's all you need actually after studying from the iwa language program books only i mean i attended the class but using only these resources never touching any other resource while i was here in korea I was able to achieve topic 5 without ever studying for it. Wow. So I really think that these books are going to help you achieve whatever your goal is. Hopefully it's to communicate in Korean, but let's say you also want to take topic. These books are really good for um, helping you prepare for topic. It's not meant to be, but it just, it will. Okay, so my main goal with this video was really just to get you started on your way to learning Korean. I know that learning a new language can be very daunting and challenging and here I am 10 years later and I still have so much that I need to learn. But no matter where you are in your Korean language journey, I'm here to support you and share with you as much as I know. So look forward to more videos on how to learn Korean for different purposes at different levels and so on. Of course, if you would like any more details on the things that I've covered in this video or if you have any more questions about studying Korean language or life here in general in Korea, please feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching. Bye! 다음에 봐요!